welcome back to another video i hope you are all doing okay today i am going to be doing a video that has been quite highly requested quite highly asked for and it is a video that i've actually done previously but if you watch my videos quite often you'll probably know that it is my it was my very very first video that i ever did and that video as you've probably seen by the title is what you will need in your kit if you are a complete beginner nail tech now i have mentioned this before i have done this video and it was my first video so the, the video was not given and we are now probably two years down the line maybe more and i definitely need to do an updated one so that is basically what we're going to be doing today we're going to be doing a video on exactly what you need in your kit if you are a beginner nail tech or if you're new to nails in 2024 i have gone over a few times again if you're new to my channel you might not know which is why i will repeat it but if you've watched my videos before you will know that i say all the time to not throw yourself in at the deep end and buy everything under the sun i am going to talk you through today the absolute basics of what you need and then everything else is a bonus and everything else is just something that you kind of pick up along the line i have obviously got a lot more stuff than what i'm going to mention in this video with regards to gels and shades and acrylics and all of that kind of stuff but what i am here to basically show you is that you don't need everything i'm going to show you just the basics of what you need to get going on your journey now i have mentioned in my last video which is how to become an l tech in 2024 which is all to do with courses where to start basically that you can have your course whichever you choose to either come with or without kit now i chose mine to come with kit just because i had absolutely no idea where i was starting and this video is for basically the people like me three years ago that didn't have a clue about where to start or what to do and if you obviously it's cost more if you want it to include kit and if it's something that you want to kind of just do over time then hopefully this video will be helpful and i will show you exactly what you need when you are building your kit and what is important to start with now obviously there's going to be three different kind of sectors there's going to be acrylic there's going to be builder gel and there's going to be normal gel and obviously they're the my main three obviously there's other you know treatments out there for example poly gel like gel extensions all of that kind of stuff that i don't do so i can't really kind of advise on that but they're the main three that i do so they are the ones that i can advise on basically so obviously if you are going into it thinking i want to be an acrylic nail technician and that's all i want to do if you're thinking that about builder gel or just normal gels then obviously there's going to be certain things that you'll need for specific ones so there's going to be like your core stuff then there's going to be add-ons for acrylic builder gel and normal gel and i will go through that in little sections i will try my best to not make this video too long and too boring but yeah i'll try my best and go through them as quickly but as clearly as possible um and just kind of start at the beginning and that is where we will start so the general stuff that you are going to need so obviously if you are a beginner nail tech you i'm basically going to treat this video as though you know absolutely nothing and over explain it if that kind of makes sense so the first thing that i'm going to go for is your files your hand files now these are going to come in different grits you will see on these ones you'll have the grit at the end of the file and this one is 180 180 so this the 180 file i find a perfect happy medium so the higher the grit the less kind of coarse it is so if you've got a 240 grit nail file that's going to be perfect for using on a natural nail it's not too coarse and it's not going to cause any damage then you're going to go down so obviously 180 is a little bit more coarse and then the coarsest one you can get i think is 80 and that is what you're going to be using on like acrylic and stuff like that i will be honest i never ever use 180 grit um, i will never use 80 grit files i've bought them in the past and never used them the 180 i find a perfect happy medium the nobu ones have uh, 240 on one side and the 180 on the other side which i think is perfect because you can use the 240 on your um natural nail plate on the free edge because that needs to be a little bit more delicate and then when you're etching the nail plate the 180 is perfect now these ones from glitter bells are just 180 on both sides 
you can get them from glitter bells in 240 and 180 but they're separate and like i say you can get other ones that have got 240 on one side and then 180 on the other so that's where i'm going to start if you're looking to buy files buy files what i would recommend is your 240 180 maybe 100 grits but and i very rarely use 80 if you want to buy them and try them out then you can do but i just don't really use them that much it all depends on how much hand filing you're going to be doing but that is exactly what the grit situation is on your files and you're going to buy quite a lot of these because you will go through them like wildfire now your next situation that i'm going to go through is to as to whether you are going to be e-file trained or not e-file trained if you are or if you aren't depends on what you're going to buy i have i am e-file trained i do all of my prep using my e-file and obviously if you're not e-file trained then you're going to be doing your prep without your e-file so with your e-file i use four main drill bits my four main drill bits are two for cuticle um work and two for either debulking or acrylic so these are my two e-file my um two cuticle bits what i'll do you can't really see them properly i'm going to be linking absolutely everything in the description box below and i will link the cuticle bits and also the barrel bit and the tornado bit that i use now the um cuticle bits and the barrel bits obviously used for different things this is for your cuticle prep so removing the um removing the cuticle off the nail plate because obviously you're going to be wanting to do that during your prep to make sure that your nails are lasting as long as possible and then your barrel bit and my tornado bit i use for debulking either acrylic or builder gel they are just not to be used on the natural nail plate but i will explain in the description box which bit is for which thing um i have done a video before on drill bits but that was just to give you a bit of a brief kind of overview if you're wanting something more in depth then i will um link the video in the top corner for where you can find the drill bit ones so that is going to be your main thing for your e-file i have the nobu silent supplies e-file e i will link it in the description and also the drill bits that i use obviously if you are not e-file trained then you're going to be doing your prep by hand and that is where your cuticle pusher and your cuticle nippers will come into play now these are the two that i am talking about my cuticle nippers i use all the time because they are going to be um still a key step even though i'm e-file trained and this is what you are going to be looking for with a cuticle pusher. So if I didn't have my e-file, what I would do is I would push the cuticles back with this end. And then what I can do is I can scrape the dead skin and all around the cuticle with this end, which is a little bit sharper. But again, I don't really use that for, don't really use this tool for that. I mainly use it for removing biab because like I say, I'm e-file trained and I use my e-file for my prep. So I don't very often use this for what it's actually intended to be used for but it's always good to have it um just in case your e-file breaks but that is going to be two things that you definitely definitely need whether you are doing acrylic build gel or gel because you're all going to have the same prep the next two things you are going to need that i use every single day is your lymph-free wipes and your acetone so lymph-free wipes i use all the time like i say to just remove any dust any dead skin off the nail plate after i've been working with it so once i'm about to go in with my application i will always just use a lymph-free wipe and some acetone to just go over the nail plate one dehydrates it and two removes it, removes any dust or dead skin or anything that you've basically nipped might nipped away and it's still sat on the nail plate these are two that i use absolutely all the time and i also use these for if i have done my builder gel application and i want to remove the tacky layer i'll just pop a little bit of acetone on my lymph free wipe and just wipe over the nail and that will remove the tacky layer so yeah they are two that i use all the time I get my lymph-free wipes and my acetone, well, I get my lymph-free wipes from Amazon and uh, my acetone now from Gliss Bells. Again, I will link them in the description box below. Now, the next thing is my tips and my tip glue. I get both of these from Gliss Bells and these are mainly for acrylic and builder gel. So I actually don't do builder gel with tips as a full set just because I try and sway away from it. But if I 
basically say for example a client comes and they've got a good bit of length on their nails and they might have broken one i will use a tip to do an extension on that nail some people do do full sets of builder gel with tips but i just think they're more durable on a natural nail and i think that i try and encourage the growth of the natural nail rather than just putting tips on all of them so like i say i just think they're a little bit more durable without tips but it's good to have it just as like a bit of an emergency kind of oh well we'll just fix one um, and then obviously acrylic you are going to be using your tips and your tip glue so this is the tip glue that i use for again from glitter bells i will link it in the description box below and then these are my go-to tips these are the clear pinched square tips and i they do so many different options of tips they do almond shape they do stiletto shape they do square and I just find myself continuously reaching for these ones. So I have tried them before, haven't used them, haven't bothered with them with the almond and the stiletto tips. I wouldn't say that they are a major thing. I would stick with square because then if you are doing some square nails, you can do square and it's really easy. You can shape your nails easily, very, very easily with from square and basically just cut them down to however you want because say for example you bought almond shaped tips the length of those nails is not going to be for everyone so although they're shaped and they're perfect if the client wants to leave them at that length then they're perfect but most of the time they don't want to leave them at that length because they're pretty long and you just find yourself having to reshape them anyway so if you stick with one box just get the square ones and then you can just shape them into whatever shape you want so yeah that's one thing just stick with one shape of tips you don't need to be going and getting almond stiletto square nail tips you can just have one box and that will do you absolutely fine my next thing is nail gloves i use gloves for every single client and recommend that you do as well because obviously we're working with products all day long and you just want to be avoiding that touching your skin and also these are acetone proof they don't melt when you get acetone on them which i have been through so many gloves and they just melt when you touch acetone so yeah these are the ones that i use again these are from glitter bells and also they're pink so the next thing that i absolutely cannot live without is a fine liner i use a fine liner every single time i mainly do builder gel nails and if it's something that you're looking at getting it into either builder gel or normal gel a fine liner is exactly what you want i use this all the time fine liners are perfect for just perfecting around the cuticle and also m moving around your builder gel products before they go in the lamp to make sure they are exactly how you want them a fine liner is something that i pick up every single time a client comes in and just absolutely swear by it so if you haven't got a fine liner then get one invest mine's the nobu sound supplies one so it is double ended we have a 15 mm brush at one side and then a 20 mm at the other so yes this is an absolute must have especially for gel and builder gel application 10 out of 10 definitely invest in a fine liner next is going to be cuticle oil cuticle oil just gives the nails that perfect finished look when they are all done obviously sometimes when we're doing nails we're using a lot of acetone which is very very drying to the skin and to the cuticles and just restoring that moisture in the nails and just making them 10 out of 10 when they are finished is an absolute must so cuticle oil 100 i have this one from glitz bells this is pineapple and i actually also do have the retail pack as well so not only can you buy these for use when you're doing clients you can also buy the retail pack so i think it's 35 pound for the retail pack but they um the rrp for these individually is between four and five pound so you actually end up making a little bit of money on your cuticle oils as well and um, this is my second box and i've only got four left so my clients absolutely love these so this is just an extra little earner on the side which you don't even have to do anything because cuticle oil is so important for clients to keep up on and sometimes i worry that people think i'm telling them to use cuticle oil just because i want to sell it and that is literally not the case people need to be oiling their cuticles to get their nails to last as long as possible so cuticle oil is a massive one the next thing is a lamp 
So the importance of lamps is massive, especially with the whole allergy thing going on. People are buying lamps from Amazon and just using cheap lamps and it is just something that you really, really need to sway away from. If you guys watch my channel, if you watch my YouTubes or my TikToks, you will know that I try and give the best advice for things that you can buy cheap and things that you just can't even risk buying cheap. And a lamp is one of those things please please do not be buying a cheap lamp from amazon because if you are putting product on a client's nails and they are not curing properly under a lamp then they are going to be at risk of getting an allergy and you really really do not want that to happen now depending on the brand that you are using you want to be using the matching lamp because these products have been made to cure their own products and you know that they are going to be curing 100 percent and how they should be so this is the Glitter Bells lamp. I do actually have one on my desk already, but rather than showing you a dirty, dirty used um, lamp, then I will show you my boxed one. Um, this is just a spare that I have, um, but a lamp is just a must. Please, please, please invest in the same lamp of the brand that you are using for your builder gels or your normal gels, because it's really important now i think that is it for my generals now the next ones that i'm going to be going into are very specific to whatever service that you are looking to provide so starting off with normal gel what you're going to be needing is a top coat and a base coat these are the hema free range from glitter bells i think they actually do do the um same but with the black bottles which obviously have hema in them but i chose the hema free ones and these are just two that are my must have and will be your must have if you are just starting out now with gel obviously you are going to need a base coat and a top coat depending on what season it is you are going to be needing kind of different kind of colors obviously so what is one of my, my main bits of advice is that when you are going into a specific season then i would focus on those colors only do not throw yourself into the deep end and think that you have to buy every single color that there is available because they are expensive and that is just something that you're going to build over time i have obviously got quite a few colors now but it's just something that i've built up over time and it's just really not something that you need to be spending a load of money on for example we are obviously now in January. We've had autumn, we've had winter, we've had the Christmas, we've had all of that kind of stuff. Now, you're not really gonna be needing your green glitters, your red glitters, you know, all of the kind of Christmas colors, because Christmas has been and gone. There is absolutely no point in buying all of that kind of stuff. You are gonna be thinking about whatever season you are starting, what are your clients going to want? You're obviously gonna want your base colors, your, you know, your basics, maybe your pinks, your nudes, your whites, your blacks, all of the kind of cores like that. But for example, the next season that we're gonna be going into is spring. And I know that spring seems quite a while off yet, but they're kind of gonna be the one, the colors that you wanna focus on. You've got your nudes, you've got your, you know, your beiges, your, your most popular, you know, the, the, like, for example, this time of year, French is just, everywhere because no one knows what to get everyone is just like what the hell do you do in january and french is really really popular in january so you want to make sure you've got a nice sheer base for a french and you've got a white and then obviously add on from there you want your you know maybe you're just your dusty pinks your your kind of colors that are going to be seasonless and then what you want to do is you want to build on your colours from there. The next season that's coming is spring. Maybe get a few pastel colours. People are going to be wanting that coming into, you know, the, the brighter months. And obviously, if you are just starting out, you're not going to have a load of clients straight away. You're going to take a few weeks or a few months to get to where you want to be with clients. And that is when those kind of colours are going to be coming in. So you don't want to be getting all of your winter colours because in a few weeks, in a few months, they're just going to be sat on the shelf and no one's going to be picked picking them so be very wise with what colors you use do not feel like you have to buy every color under the rainbow because you really don't just focus on whichever season you're going into and get your basics just something that i wanted to mention is glitter bells actually have the unbelievable gels um collection as well and i have black and white in the unbelievable gels and these never just sit on the shelf they are always being picked up and the black and white the difference in the unbelievable gels is that they are very very pigmented a little bit thicker so when you're doing french and when you're doing nail art 
these are absolutely perfect because when you are using a gel there are a little bit of a looser consistency a little bit thinner and when you're doing detailed stuff the pigment is not as strong so when you're doing um like i say french for example or if you're doing any nail art black and white are quite, are quite popular so you are really really going to find this beneficial and then obviously you can use your fine liner that i mentioned earlier for your frenchies or anything like that that's going to be quite popular during the this kind of season but yeah just get your black and your white in these um in these unbelievable gels because they are 10 out of 10 the only thing i would say is the black needs curing a little bit longer because obviously black is so pigmented you just want to give this a little bit of extra curing time to make sure that they are 100 percent cured because black is super super pigmented so it needs a little bit longer in the lamp but those two i would definitely invest in the next two are dehydrator and primer again these are the hema free ones from glitter Bells, the dehydrator and primer and these are going to be used on acrylics and builder gel well actually the dehydrator is going to be used for normal gel as well so the dehydrator can be used across all three surfaces and then the primer i just use for builder gel and for acrylic so the um, acid free primer i actually only use on the hema free builder gels i don't use the primer on the black bottle builder gels and they are just going to be another absolute staple in your kit for um depending on whichever service you're going for but yes they are definitely another must-have for your collection again i wouldn't be telling you anything that is just going to i'm not going to be telling you to buy anything that's just going to be sat on yourself and not used this is all stuff that i use on every single client and i know it's going to be a must depending on which service you are deciding to focus on or if you're going to be offering all three now the next thing that i'm going to be going into is builder gel so this kind of is the same for acrylic as well but obviously acrylic and builder gel you are going to have a core color base obviously with gel it's just whatever color they pick that's what they're going to be getting but with acrylic and builder gel obviously it's an infillable product so when your client comes back you're going to be filing off the base you're going to be filing off to the base and then you're going to be infilling it so obviously with infillable products you are going to be picking a lot of clients pick a very neutral base so with builder gel and acrylic what i would say is to pick your very very simple core colors because there are options of builder gel out there that people just hardly ever choose for example so they do a black bottle builder gel and they do a hema free builder gel obviously some people may have allergies and some people may not and obviously people just have different preferences as to whether they prefer the black bottle or the pink bottle now i would say if i had to choose i would prefer the black bottle purely because it is easier to soak off and i just love this shade this shade like i say if you've watched my videos you will know that i use this to death honest to god this is just my holy grail i absolutely love this color this is cookie cream by glitter bells and it, sometimes it is so hard to get this when it's in stock because it just sells out so fast but this color i will show it you now is just divine like it's just the most sheer but like it's just to die for this color just suits so many different skin tones it's really really neutral it's lovely to have on what i'll do is i've probably probably shown you it before but i'll show you again in case you're new here i'll pop a picture in the bottom of the screen to show you what cookie cream looks like on but this is way way more popular than for example this shade which is as you will see a lot darker because i feel like a lot of people go for they go for a lot of nail art and stuff like that now and they prefer the base to be a really really neutral natural pink and then enhance it with some nail art or a french or they might have a gel color over the top but basically what i'm getting at here is do not feel like if you are starting builder gel nails that you have to buy 20 different shades of builder gel because i tell you now i've probably got around that many shades on my shelf and i probably pick up about three four of them and the others just basically sit there and 
I'm just basically saying do not throw yourself in and buy every single shade because it's just not needed. If you find a really, really nice neutral pink that will go with everything, that will look perfect with French, look perfect with nail art and have just a, you know, it's possible to have a gel colour over the top as well, then that is what you're pr primarily going to be using and that is what I found in Cookie Cream and I just absolutely love it, like the best thing ever. Now the same goes for acrylic. This is one of the biggest mistakes that I made in my earlier months of being a nail tech is that I basically went on Glitterbell's website and put in my basket about 50 different acrylic colours and <clears throat> later realised that I didn't like working with coloured acrylic. So basically you can get acrylic in core powders or you can get acrylic colours. So basically what you're going to have to do if you use core, core acrylic then this is going to be your basics. It's going to be your white, it's going to be your clear, and it's going to be like your pinky kind of nudes. And then with your coloured acrylic, the one thing that I didn't think of is that when you are infilling acrylic, if you're using coloured acrylic, you either have to do a base layer of clear and then file the coloured acrylic down to the clear base, or you're going to have to find, you're going to have to use the same colour. Because if you're using coloured acrylic, because you infill it you, you're gonna have to use the same color otherwise it's just not gonna work so i realized that i didn't like working that way and i would prefer to use a core powder which is like either a pink or a nude or that kind of like color and then do a gel color over the top that's just how i prefer working obviously everyone's different your skill levels may be m magnificent with like colored acrylic and you might like to sculpt and all of that kind of stuff but this is just my my perfect thing and obviously if you are in the stage of whether you're unsure of which way you're going to be going whether you're going to want to work with colored acrylic or you're not just try one of buy one of each don't don't buy a load of everything until you actually know how you want to work just even just for playing around, just get a core powder, literally just one. This is pink opal and I've used this from the very beginning. I picked out this colour and just absolutely love it. So that is my go-to for acrylic. Yeah, just don't feel like you have to buy every single colour because you really don't. Just buy little, have a play around with it and then if you know you're happy with it and you know like for example you want to work with coloured acrylic or you want to work with core, powder, then core powders, then buy further into it once you've decided a little later on. Now the next things that you're going to need for acrylic is your monomer and your dappen dish. So the dappen dish is for your monomer to pour it in. Don't pour too much in because you probably won't need it. Just try put a little bit in at a time. If you need to top it up then you can top it up. Now I use the Hema Free Monomer from Glitter Bells and that is because when I first started I did a lot of acrylic and I actually ended up having a bit of a reaction and I basically switched to the Hema Free Monomer and then it absolutely cleared up. So whether it was whether that was the issue I'm not too sure but once I'd swapped to this I had absolutely no issues so I used the Hema Free Monomer. There's absolutely no difference in the Hema Free Monomer to the Violet Monomer. It's just the same. It's just Hema Free. Um, and then your Dappen Dish obviously for putting your monomer in. Both of these are from Glitter Bells and this just has a little lid on it to um, keep the odour away but I just get rid of the acrylic, the monomer after every client anyway so yeah that's just my monomer and my dappen dish the next one is going to be your acrylic brush so you are going to want to get an a kalinsky acrylic brush that is because the kalinsky hair um, acrylic brushes are just a little bit better with the quality well i say a little bit better definitely better they are more expensive but you are going to notice a big difference in your application because if you are getting acrylic stuck in your brush and they just fray really easily, that's not gonna be good for your application. So invest in a good brush. And with regards to sizes, I started with a smaller one. I think I started with either an eight or a 10 um, size. And I actually found that that made my life harder because obviously the smaller the brush, the less, uh, the smaller bead you pick up. And I just found that it just wasn't enough for me to kind of cover the whole nail. I felt like I was doing about 50 beads to build up my nail and um, so then why when i increase the brush brush size obviously don't go too big i think this is i think this is probably a 12 now 
and I find this perfect but yeah obviously the size of your brush depends on the amount of liquid that you can get in your brush which obviously then depends on the size of the bead so you don't want to be going too big because you don't want to be picking up too much product and then not knowing what to do with it when you're a beginner so probably start off I'd say maybe around a 10 and then if you kind of feel like you need a bigger one then obviously size up but um yeah a good um acrylic brush is definitely a must-have and um yeah just don't skimp on an acrylic brush because if you buy a cheap one from amazon it will fray really easily it will not last and you'll just end up buying another one now i am very wary of how long this video is getting and i think fingers crossed that i've covered everything obviously there is more stuff that I have, but I'm trying to think of absolute staples and things that you definitely need just to kind of start with. Like I say, I think I've I think I've covered everything. Obviously, if I haven't, please let me know in the comments and I will advise further. But I've tried to cover everything on general and then obviously different little sectors. So hopefully you've not found this too boring and you've actually found it helpful. Um, again, if I've missed anything, I'm really, really sorry. Please do let me know and then I can advise a little bit more. Um, but yeah, hopefully you found this video helpful. If you, um, you know, get, get stuck with anything, then please let me know. But I'm going to put quite a lot of detail in the description box below and leave links for absolutely everything. So yeah have a look at the description box have a little look around obviously anything on glitter bells you can get a discount on as well i will leave my code in the description box because everything that i've shown you from glitter bells you'll actually able to be able to get 10 percent off your order as well on my uh, with my code um but yeah so i'll leave that in the description box and hopefully you found it helpful thank you so so much for listening and hope it was help to some of you if you're just starting out again if you have any any questions leave them in the comment in the comments below or you can message me on instagram if you don't want your um comments to be public just message me on instagram i'll leave my little handle at the bottom of the screen and yeah i hope you have a lovely day and i will see you in the next video bye